Hello and welcome everyone to Teslanomics Live. I'm your host, Ben Sullins, and this is the show where we dig into the latest Tesla news from the week that has passed. And we do it live because, well, things change rapidly. Usually this runs about an hour or so with a big Q&A section at the end, which is only available to those that join either on Crowdcast or support on Patreon. You will be able to watch that here, but if you want to actually ask a question, you need to join the community at teslanomics.co slash join. No money's involved, but you do need to do, do that one little step in order to get the invite. So thanks to everyone that is watching on YouTube, as well as those on Crowdcast and all of the Patreon supporters. So the first story that I want to get into today is kind of nuts. But before I do that, I need to give a big thanks to my sponsor of this episode. And this is Brilliant.org. Now, Brilliant is a really cool place where you can kind of freshen up on your math and logic and science skills. And it's actually become sort of an addiction for me. Um, particularly, I like their machine learning uh, course that they have here. And a lot of the things that I do in my work, whether it be uh, analysis here or some other stuff I'm researching for for other folks or other organizations, I use all of these skills. So if you're new to this stuff, this is a great place to get started. Um, it's also much more productive and healthy than uh, just browsing Instagram and those kind of things, I feel. So uh, if you're interested in Brilliant, you can sign up for free at brilliant.org slash teslanomics. And the first uh, 200 people that want to do the premium subscription, you get 20% off. So thanks to Brilliant for supporting um, the show. And uh, guys, I hope you enjoy it and let me know um, if you do. Okay, uh, to the news of the day. The first story is about the sabotage at the Tesla factory. And this story was originally reported last Monday uh, where Elon Musk uh, had sent an email to all employees on Sunday night alleging that there was a saboteur within the company's ranks. Musk alleged that this employee tweaked code on internal products and sent company data out without authorization, as if they would authorize that. Uh, Tesla is in the midst of sweeping layoffs, the 9%, which we talked about last week, um, and a profitability drive, which is their goal for the second half of this year. Um, it's also under pressure to produce 5,000 Model 3s per week by the end of this quarter, uh, also known as uh, this week. So uh, we'll, you know, lots of stuff on the line, lots at stake here. This, we already talked about it, I believe, on the show, but you've probably already seen this. The thing that was news about this to me and that was interesting was there was uh, an actual email exchange between Elon and the guy, uh, Martin Tripp, uh, who was a Gigafactory employee, the, uh, about this, about you know what was going on, um, and it's just it's just insane. So so here it is. So um, Marty Tripp, uh, Martin Tripp, emailed Elon uh, and said, uh, "Don't worry, you have what's coming to you um, for the lies that you have told to the public and investors." Elon then responded, which he later said was probably a mistake, saying, "Threatening me only makes it worse for you." Uh, later, uh, Marty Tripp responded. I'm going to try to make that bigger so you can see it. Um, I never made a threat. I simply told you that you have what's coming. Thank you for this gift. Not sure what he meant by that. Um, and then Elon responded saying you should be ashamed of yourself for framing other people. You're a horrible human being. That actually garnered a lot of headlines right there. Elon is, you know, if you've followed him for a while, you know that he's not one to hold back. Um, and so, you know, whatever he, he gets to do what he wants. He can say those things. Uh, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, then Marty Tripp responded saying, I never framed anyone else or even insinuated anyone else as being involved in my production pro uh, of documents of your millions of dollars of waste, safety concerns, lying to investors slash the world. And putting the cars on the road with safety issues as being a horrible human being. And this kind of got me. Um, so then Elon responded and said, uh, there are literally no injuries, is what he meant to say, with the Model 3. It is by far the safest car in the world for any mid-size vehicle. And of course, a company with billions of dollars in product is going to have millions of dollars of scrap. This is not news. However, betraying your word of honor, breaking the deal you had when Tesla gave you a job, and framing your colleagues are wrong, and some come with legal penalties. So it goes, be well. So, um, 
they actually ended up filing a lawsuit and uh, in the lawsuit filed in federal court, Tesla accused uh, Martin Tripp, the former Gigafactory employee of unlawfully hacking into the company's confidential and trade secret information and transferring that information to third parties. Tesla, and this is a quote from it, Tesla has only begun to understand the full scope of Tripp's illegal activity, but he has thus far admitted to writing software that hacked Tesla's manufacturing operating system, MOS, and transferred several gigabytes of Tesla data to outside entities. That's directly from the lawsuit. So I thought we can actually take a look at the lawsuit if you want, and I'll put a link to this in the description, or it might already be there. Um, but here it is. Uh, here's the actual lawsuit. You can see the Tesla is the plaintiff, um, and Martin Tripp is is the uh, defendant there. And so in the summary of the dispute, that's kind of what I just uh, j just just brought up there. But I do want to uh, point out one additional thing here, um, in that it says, beyond the misconduct of which Tripp admitted, he also wrote a computer code to periodically, let me make it bigger so you can see it, beyond the misconduct to which Tripp admitted, he also wrote computer code to periodically export Tesla's data off its network and into the hands of third parties. His hacking software was operating on three separate computer systems of other individuals at Tesla so that the data would be exported even after he left the company and so that those individuals would be falsely implicated as guilty parties. Tripp also made false claims to the media about information he stole. For example, Tripp claimed that punctured battery cells had been used in certain Model 3 vehicles even though no punctured cells were ever used in vehicles, batteries, or otherwise. Tripp also vastly exaggerated the true amount of the v and value of scrap material that Tesla generated during the manufacturing process and falsely claimed that Tesla was delayed in bringing new manufacturing equipment online. Okay, so that those are some some big strong claims right there's, there's a lot going on and it's hard to know what's really true and what's really not now uh, there was trip did go to the media and the guardian has a really good article article here that talks about it um and he actually said in in to the guardian that uh, uh regarding the hacking um that i'm not that smart i don't know how to code i tried to teach myself to code and i don't have the patience now, Musk told The Guardian by email, he initiated the email exchange this morning at 8.57. Um, I certainly would not have initiated contact, nor would I, I have even have his personal email address, and it was probably unwise for me to have responded. So that was in regards to the email there. So the data that he allegedly hacked, and now he's throwing out the claim that he's a whistleblower, um, was related to the amount of scrap there, and that was reported by the Business Insider on June 4th. Um, so it was talking about the materials that they were using for the Model 3 and the waste that they were generating. And what I garnered from this is that it seems that uh, Mr. Tripp was very, um, very focused on the mission, right? He was very, very focused on whether or not Tesla was was doing, you know, right by uh, by their mission statement um, and that he took issue with this. And maybe that's what what spurred it. I don't know. Um, Tesla had said previously that it was because he didn't get a promotion, um, and then he later denied that claim. So it's hard to tell really what's going on. Um, but the the data that he he uh, released to Business Insider here states that um, the Gigafactory. Uh, I'll just read it to you. Documents reviewed by Business Insider show that scrap at the Gigafactory may have cost the company at least 150 million. Tesla told Business Insider that 150 million was an overstatement. So there you go. That kind, that kind of this is the point there. And I think they chose an extremely old picture of Elon for this. Uh, anyways, um, the question then is like, could there be more? Could there be more people? And Elon was talking about this um, a little bit on Twitter, and he said that there is more, but the actions of a few bad apples will not stop Tesla from reaching uh, its goals. With 40,000 people, the worst one in 1,000 will have issues. That's still around 40 people. Um, and, you know, uh, it, it just begs the question, did this actually start the fire? Um, so he had sent another email about this fire that had happened. However, um, I believe that, that this guy worked at the Gigafactory and he's claiming that he didn't have anything to do with actually changing the MOC, the, uh, the, or was it the MOS? I forget the, uh, the manufacturing operating system, the MOS. So it, it does sound like what I've, what I've gathered from a lot of said, it sounds a lot like 
he was just trying to expose some things um, and that, you know, maybe how he went about it uh, is, is where they say, you know, you're framing other people, you're doing all these kind of things. Um, so there's that. And so, you know, Elon, had, it, it, you know, it was kind of alluding to like, oh, there's this fire and all that. Now, thankfully, um, no one was actually hurt by the fire and, and the, the equipment and everything wasn't severely damaged. So it's hard to really say. And, and I don't think Tesla's made that claim, you know, in a, in a lawsuit or something um, fully. So, so it's, I, I would go with no, but, um, it, it is, it is kind of one of those things where, where, where you're, it's, it's unclear, um, as to the ramifications of here. So, um, you know, there is another thing, uh, that this isn't the first time that Tesla had done this, uh, or I'm sorry, that Elon had, had, had suspected sabotage. Uh, it goes back to when, um, in 2016, after a SpaceX rocket exploded, um, while being fueled up, uh, before an engine test, uh, Musk and uh, Gwen Shotwell, the, the president and CEO, uh, COO of, of uh, SpaceX, uh, looked into the possibility of sabotage. So it, this goes into this idea about um, being paranoid and that only the paranoid survive, which is one of Elon's statements that, that he quoted here. Um, you know, all in all, it, it's really hard to say uh what's what here. I think that as the lawsuit goes on, what we'll see is is more information about this. Um, and I really hope that the damage uh, that was done, if any other than leaking the data, uh, is, is not, not uh, severely uh, permanent and it doesn't really uh, hamper any of the production goals and things like that. It sounds like Mr. Tripp wants Tesla to succeed, but was concerned with some things. So it sounds like he's playing the whistleblower role but tesla has a different story and so i think in court when evidence comes out i don't know what will be made public but at that time we'll have a much much better um uh, much much clearer picture of it so i'm curious what you guys think about this uh it's sad to see these kind of things um and and, and it sucks and, and so hopefully we can move on from it and hopefully tesla can kind of get things back um back online so with that i look to you guys for some insights let me know what you think in the comments Okay, next I wanna talk about something that is a bit more um, on the positive side uh, and is kind of urgent. Um, and I'm bringing this up and you know some people will be upset about this, but I think uh, it would be, uh, I'd be doing you disservice if I, if I didn't mention it. So the next story is that uh, Tesla now has, uh, now will be charging for the premium internet features, which it calls uh, premium connectivity. Um, after for Tesla's purchase after uh, July 1st, which is coming up in uh, just a few days here. So um, with that, that sucks. Uh, you'll still get basic stuff like maps, but uh, traffic, real-time traffic information and potentially uh, streaming internet service for like a browser in the car or some of these other things, you will have to pay for. Um, it, it comes out according to the report here on electric, uh, the premium package will be around $100 a year um, and that the standard package will, will include kind of basic level data. Uh, now, it, they didn't say, it wasn't clear if like, it's just the speed of the data or if the types of data or what it may be. However, uh, the, to me, again, being kind of a good steward here, this is, is my time to tell you that if you've been on the fence about buying a Tesla uh, Model S or X, then this is it. Like right now, literally this week is when you should be doing that. Now you can go get my referral code, which will also get you free unlimited supercharging on your S or X um, by going to teslanomics.co slash TD. Um, and you can, you can find that there. Now, this referral program, which also has the unlimited supercharging, uh, I asked some of my friends that, that sometimes have, have, have a clue as to how, you know, often what happens is that they just, they continue to extend it over and over and over, which makes sense because they've made over a billion dollars on this program, so why wouldn't you? Um, however, last time I pinged them asking like, hey, what's going on, what's going on? Are, are people going to, uh, to, to actually lose this ability? crickets. I haven't heard a response at all, which means that it may actually happen. So I'm a little nervous for for anyone that, that's been on the fence here. So there's two things happening. 
you have to pay for the premium internet access after July 1st, which is coming up very quickly. And if you, and you, you may lose um, the ability to get free supercharging on an SRX after the 15th. So that's also coming up in just a couple weeks. So uh, lots of stuff there. I'm not trying to be overly sensational about this. These are just real things that are happening that I wanted to share with you guys. Now, I also have something else that I'm trying to help with here. Um, and before I get into a new giveaway that I'm doing, because I wanna share this with you guys, I want you guys to, to enjoy this. I wanna share a quick video um, from the guy that won the Model 3 overnight test drive uh, last contest we did, the last giveaway. Um, his name is Andrew, and we're gonna cut to a little quick video that he sent me um, just recently, and then I'll give you the new details on the new giveaway we're doing. So um, here it is, Andrew, on his experience with an, uh, an overnight test drive of the Tesla Model 3. I'm Andrew. I got the uh, I won the giveaway from uh, Ben here uh, for the Model 3, and that's been an absolutely amazing experience. It was one of the best days of my life, um, other than the day I got married, of course, because that's the most important. And the experience, you know, it's very hard to describe in some ways because it's just when you sit in a brand new car, you know, you can always be amazed. But when you sit in a Tesla, the experience is entirely different. But having something that's just like every inch is something about technology in this car, you know, and when you unlock it, of course, the doors, you know, the mirrors pop open and that's unique to very few vehicles. And it's just seeing how simple it is, like in person, the experience is totally different. One thing I, I like best about the car was just when you sit in, you know, you're, you have this 15 inch screen in front of you that like you can do anything on it and everything everything's on it you know and but for me I absolutely loved it you know it, it took some time getting used to and because I was driving something really expensive for the first time you know I was trying to be very careful you know eyes on the road more than eyes on the screen it was a really great experience and thank you so much Ben and everybody else for providing this opportunity of a lifetime for me I absolutely loved it and I would Definitely love to become a Tesla owner one day. I even drove or had my uh, Tesla shirt on that I was uh, got for my birthday present because you know I just had to fanboy it all out you know for a day. <laughs> Thank you. So there you have it. It is a real thing. You can win this stuff. Also in that last giveaway, um, 10 people got tickets to TeslaCon and also um, other 10 more people got free uh, t-shirts um, from us here at Teslanomics. So this new one is similar, but it's more focused on the S and X. We do have 10 prizes to give away. So 10 folks will be able to do an overnight test drive. So again, this all plays into the July 1st deadline that if you order your Tesla before then, you won't have to pay for the added premium internet um, which is a monthly cost, or I'm sorry, a yearly cost of so far 100 bucks is what we know. Um, also, you'll be able to take advantage of the free supercharging. So go to teslanomics.co slash drive Tesla. That's teslanomics.co slash drive Tesla. And you will be able to enter this, this giveaway. Now, the way the giveaway works is you'll schedule, a, I'll send you a link. It's only gonna run for until Wednesday. So two more days um, until this is up because I want you to be able to schedule it, get a test drive and make that decision before July 1st. It's really important that, that you do that so that way you don't miss out on that. So um, you can enter to win, uh, there's no cost involved. Um, if you're already subscribed on YouTube and the email list and all that, your best bet is you can refer friends and get three additional entries into the contest for every referral or every person that you refer and then they can do it as well. So it's kind of this viral thing where you can get a ton of entries just by referring others. I think last time we had um, a couple hundred uh, additional entries into the contest because um, of, of the folks that were able to share that. So go check it out, teslanomics.co slash drive Tesla. I hope you guys get it. I hope you, um, you know, love your overnight test drives. Uh, and then from there, you know, you can, you can make that decision. I don't want you, want you guys to think about like any pressure or stress, you know, financially to do this. I'm really looking out if you guys were already going down this path. I want to help provide kind of an experience and an opportunity for you to really make that decision for you whether or not you want to do it. So um, there you have it. Uh, thanks, you know, uh, thanks to the Turo uh, who sponsored the last one. Um, and, and, you know, best of luck to everyone here um, on this one. Okay, well, our next story is 
more Model 3 stuff that's coming out. And I think this is pretty exciting. Um, and there's some really, really deep kind of details that I want to get into here. Um, the first one is that the uh, there was a massive shipment of Model 3s spotted uh, in, in Point Richmond, California, which is near Fremont. It's near the Tesla factory. Um, they're currently looking at about a rate of 3,500 vehicles per week, and their goal is to get to 5,000 per week by the end of this month. If they hit that, that'll be a tremendous milestone for them. Um, Two things, they'll be making an absolute ton of money, like a quarter billion dollars every single week um, from, from those efforts. And they will probably, that'll probably be the first time that they've ever actually hit a target that Elon set. I'll have to, I'll have to double check on that one, but, but it'll be a tremendous thing if they're able to do it. So um, in this article here from Electrek, almost a thousand Model 3s were spotted in Point Richmond. Um, last month, however, they started delivering these Model 3s to Canada. And that is interesting because uh, also a couple months ago, I think back in March, all Model S and X deliveries were delayed to late June. And I can say from the people that I've referred, uh, looking at those delivery numbers, they're starting to tick up again. It used to be, you know, people ordered and like they just sat there for months. Now they're starting to get delivered. And a lot of us assume that this is related to the uh, the tax credit situation. So here are just a couple quick photos um, from, from the Electric article, and I'll put a link to that there, uh, of what they estimate to be about 1,000 Model 3s waiting to be delivered. Pretty, pretty epic. So assuming that that's true, I wanted to run through the scenarios as it relates to the tax credit. So as you guys know, or hopefully, you know, maybe you know, the, the way the tax credit situation works here in the United States for electric vehicles is there's federal ones and there's state ones. The state ones are kind of unique, and I'm not going to get into all those nuances, but I'm talking about the federal tax credit. So the federal tax credit starts to phase out once a single manufacturer delivers, actually, you know, in, in, in their eyes, they say sell, but to them, because most cars, when they're sold, you actually, you know, get the keys. Uh, that means, in our case, delivered, right? Now, Tesla, as of Q1 2018, using data from um, the EV scorecard in on Inside EVs, who does a great job tracking this stuff uh, really far back, the, I had them at 175, almost 176,000 vehicles delivered. Now, this also doesn't include the original Roadster, uh, which does count towards this number because it's any vehicle, I believe, after December 1st of 2009. So literally every Tesla that's ever been made um, so this number could even be higher um, as of the end of Q1. So with their with their rate that they're producing um, these cars, it was pretty much a guarantee that they would they would hit this number in Q2. But the problem would be that it would be towards the end of Q2. Um, and so so with that, uh, it's one of those things where where it's really difficult. And this is where I think they've done some strategic kind of deliveries outside of the US because those don't count and things like that. Um, so what I did last time is I did a delivery forecast and I just looked at you know the previous kind of month to month and then I calculated using um, using the, the models built into Tableau here, uh, uh, what, those, uh, what those deliveries might look like for the next year. Then when you add those in, um, I looked at kind of a couple different scenarios. Uh, and this was the same model I used previously where uh, the Model 3 ramp would continue and they would just do nothing different, in which case by June, by now, they would have hit 230,000 deliveries. And that means that any vehicle in Q2 or Q3 that had been delivered would qualify. And then Q4 and, and on would, you know, you'd start to see the, the results of the phase out. The other model that I had predicted was that they would either slow the Model 3 ramp, which doesn't appear to happen, or they would slow deliveries. Um, and then they also could deliver outside of the US. So we did see a slowing of deliveries in the US and them start to deliver them outside of the US. So that makes sense. So kind of model two is the one that, that I was looking at here. And so with this, what I was estimating is that they would hit their, their 200,000th car in kind of July. I think I had them, um, yeah, 199,438 in July. But again, there's definitely a margin of error here. So, so you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll literally hit their 200,000th car July 1st. So there's that. So these were kind of the models I was predicting previously. 
Now, the way that the credit works, just to recap, so you guys are aware, because I think this is really important to understand, is that basically forever, all Teslas qualified for the full $7,500 uh, US tax credit. And that's because the amount of energy that they use, the size of the battery, is what is actually based on the credit and $7,500 being the top end of that, being, being the, the max. Then from there, um, they're basically all, all vehicles are, are qualified until they hit their 200,000th car delivered. Um, and so, you know, that would basically mean that everything um, up until, you know, Q3, assuming that they, they do it, this is what we're all hoping for, um, it, all, all vehicles delivered in Q3 would also count for the full tax credit and then in Q4 as well, meaning the rest of 2018, every Tesla that was delivered, Model S, X, 3, whatever else, yeah, I think that's all they have right now, but uh, all of those vehicles would qualify for the federal tax credit of $7,500. Now, a quick aside, the way the tax credit works, you don't get to take that money off of the purchase price. This is why on my Model 3 cost calculator, you can put in a million dollars in incentives, but that month, your, your loan amount and all that stuff is still the same because it doesn't change that. You still have to, let's say you configure it fully spec'd out at $70,000 or whatever, you still have to get a loan for that full amount or, or however you're gonna finance it. You still have to pay that up front. Then, assuming that you, as, an, as a taxpayer or as a wage earner in the United States, have $7,500 or greater uh, in, in a tax liability, meaning that you made enough money that you owe that much money uh, uh, in taxes throughout the year, then you will be able to deduct that. Now. You may think, well, I don't. I usually get a return. I don't, you know, usually pay taxes at the end of the year. That's not what matters because you actually pay taxes every single paycheck. Most people do, anyways, um, as a W-2 wage earner. And so, while you're paying those taxes, essentially all of that stuff, all of the money that you paid, or seventy-five hundred dollars of it, you would be able to get back, um, assuming you had more than that in a tax liability. Uh, last time I looked at this, it means that if you're making around fifty-five thousand dollars in the U.S. or greater, you should be okay. Um, but that's something that you could look at your, your previous taxes to get a, a perfectly clear um, answer on. So after those two quarters, the, two, the quarter they hit it in and the following, which in our scenario here would be the rest of 2018, it drops down to half of that, 3750. So that means Q1 and Q2 of 2019, every vehicle delivered in the US then would also get, um, would get 50% of that, 3750. Still not bad, honestly. Then for the next two quarters, so the second half of 2019, you would get half of that, so you're at 1875. And then 2020 Q1, January 1st, essentially you would have no more tax credit left uh, for um, for Teslas. Now this could change. Um, the legislate there, the public utilities have tried to lobby the United States government to remove this cap. Um, I haven't heard any updates on that, but that is a potential as well that either as this happens or, you know, down the road, they could bring it back or increase that, make it unlimited, whatever. We don't know what's going to happen with the political kind of situation, but this is kind of as it stands, what we're all hoping for um, in terms of the tax credit situation here uh, in the U.S. So really curious what you guys think. I hope you guys get your cars and you qualify for all of that. Um, because it's pretty awesome that uh, that our government is able to provide this for us here in the United States. So uh, let me know if you have questions on that. Hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Um, and I appreciate uh, you know all, all the people sending in questions about this because it does help focus this because I want to make sure you guys basically understand how it all works. Alrighty, let's go on to our next story. And um, this one, I'm going to have just a couple little tidbits here, um, some stuff about... Uh, about Tesla's, let me pull it up here. There it is. Okay, so uh, this next story is about some long awaited features for the Model 3 um, and then some other kind of crazy stuff that's going on. So uh, Tesla just last week released the uh, Model 3 updates with Summon. Um, which is the feature where from your app in your phone, you can have your car kind of come out and meet you from your garage. Um, you also, if you're in a tight parking space or whatever, you can kind of control it, go back and forth. Kind of crazy, kind of fun. You can kind of play jokes on people and stuff like that. Um, then they also released a cabin overheat protection, which keeps the, the temperature in the car um, below a certain threshold. I think it's 105 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which I don't know what that works out to Celsius, maybe like 
30 degrees Celsius, something like that. Um, and then also Wi-Fi, so it no longer has to rely solely on the LTE connection, which is built in, but when you get home, it can connect to your home's Wi-Fi and do updates and things like that, which in theory should be stronger, depending on where you live and how strong the, that connection is. Um, now, I believe this is in um, tw the feature, the version, let me look it up here, it's 2018.24, um, I thought it was, yeah, 2018.24. Now, that uh, is interesting to me, and I know a lot of people, I'm going to look it up right now because I am woefully behind on updates and haven't got any notifications about my car um, getting, getting that update. I'm going to look right now and just see what I'm at. Um, I am at 2018.18.13. So I don't know how far behind I am or why I stopped getting updates. It has been a few weeks um, since I've got updates. Uh, so we'll see. Now, I also did think that the cabin overheat protection was already in place because it seemed for a, quite a while, and this is when I saw a large amount of phantom drain, that my car would never get above 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And a lot of people were talking about that on the forums and stuff. And they also said that, um, that with that, you know, you couldn't adjust it. You couldn't, you know, uh, enable or disable that. Whereas in the Model S and X, you can uh, enable or disable this feature. I think most people leave it enabled because it also is just kind of crazy if you get in your car and it's over 105 degrees. Um, so, you know, that that's that's a, a cool update. I can't wait to to see it in action. Um, I'll probably be, be uh, unable to not do goofy things with it. Uh, <laughs> and maybe play tricks on my wife or something like that. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's coming. So that's awesome. Now, uh, and another kind of thing updated to this, uh, Tesla is uh, talking, uh, releasing, or in a dev version of autopilot, there is something called Mad Max mode. Uh, there was a funny photo here that, um, let's see if I can pull this up for you. Yep, so you kind of see someone Photoshop the, the Tesla semi um, into the into the Ma Mad Max scene. I think someone else, yeah, someone else did it with the Model Model S, the Road, or I'm sorry, the Model X, the Roadster. Um, yeah, so there's that, and then Elon responded to this uh, by saying it's real, showing a photo of autopilot on a um, on a uh, a development version, which is what he drives and what what a lot of other you know engineers and stuff there drive, where it actually has something called the blind spot threshold, uh, which is the idea of like when to merge and, and how to deal with that. Um, you have standard aggressive and Mad Max, so we'll probably see that at some point. Um, and then there's also uh, you know. <laughs> A photo here that um, Fred from Electrek posted of an actual Model S in kind of one of the Mad Max movies. So kind of nuts. Um, when I saw this, I was really interesting. I guess it's the, um, this is the dev version. So I saw augmented vision, lane visualizer, clip recording. I, mean, I was just blown away. I'm like, yes, give me all of these things. Um, and then Elon actually responded. I think, let me see where it is. Uh, I don't think he put posted on here, but he was basically saying that um, one of the challenges with this, because someone asked, you know, how many of these features are going to be available to us, and uh, one of the one of the responses was that basically it's it's going to be difficult because you can basically bully a <laughs> one of these cars pretty easily, right? You just try to go into it, and it'll like stop and freak out because the AI doesn't want to get into an accident. So there's a balance here of like how safe and how autonomous do you make it. Um, versus, you know, letting people kind of bully you uh, around. So, yeah, I don't know what to call this segment. I think each week I ought to have a little a little piece here where I just kind of run through Elon's kind of random crazy tweets. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's nuts. Um, let me know what you guys think about that down in, in the comments. All right, the next story I want to talk about is uh, related to the layoffs from, from last week. Um, and this one, uh, right now we're talking about them closing uh, some solar facilities. So they're closing 13 to 14 installation facilities of the Tesla solar business. And this is related to the 9% layoff that they had been, uh, that they announced uh, a couple weeks ago. Now, uh, in this layoff, uh, the company said that it's cuts to overall energy team, including batteries to power to store power were in line with the broader 9% staff cut. We continue to expect that Tesla's solar and battery business will be the same as our automotive as automotive over the long term. 
The company also fired dozens of solar customer service staffers at call centers in Nevada and Utah, according to former Tesla employees, some of whom were terminated in last week's cuts. Ending the Home Depot partnership, which allowed for solar sales in about 800 stores, is part of Tesla's larger effort to absorb Solar City into its high-end brand and sell through 90 of its 109 U.S. retail stores and its website, the company said. So that's kind of a big deal. Uh, we, I don't think this is really a surprise to anybody that's been paying attention. Um, the Solar City acquisition hasn't gone great. Um, there was a lot of controversy around it at the time. Um, so there's a lot of stuff happening in, in this space. And, you know, the, the, what is the future of Tesla's solar business is really the question, because in Q1 of 2017, uh, last, or last Q1, they had 76 megawatts installed. Contrast that to 2016, it was 200 megawatts. That was a huge drop. Um, and so Tesla even said, in announcing quarterly results in February, Tesla said growth in solar deployments would resume later in the year. Now, presumably, this is because they want to uh, they want to grow the Model 3, and they need to get that. So basically, all hands on deck. You know, forget all that stuff for now. Let's make the Model 3 successful because that is the make or break moment for the company. And so when you get there, I think that that all makes sense. Right, so um, solar generation in the U.S. is growing rapidly, um, but it is a tiny fraction of the overall uh, energy mix in the United States. Um, and so, Tesla making them may or may not make a difference. Back when they were Solar City, they were the largest kind of installer, but they didn't really make them. Right, so that was the big change. Um, and so there's some questions about what's going to happen in the Buffalo plant and all those kind of things. And so, yeah, big question marks around around this. Now, this is in contrast to a, a new report from the Bloomberg New Energy Finance um, talking about basically what's going on here. There's some really interesting stuff where you can see the power generation and how that's shifting um, and how you know it's going to continue to shift more towards renewables, solar, wind, um, hydro, those kind of things. Um, and then also, you know, the, the battery prices and utility scale solar, like the cost of these things is coming down. In fact, I just saw an episode of uh, Fully Charged uh, with Robert Llewellyn, um, who was talking about their installing, I believe, the world's largest uh, wind, uh, offshore wind turbine ever. And that this one turbine, I think a blade was over 100 meters, which is insane. And then from there, they would ought to be able to generate, and I'm going to mess this up, but go watch his, his show, um, his recent episode. It was talking about, I think, 12 megawatts is, is what the size of the, of the wind, one single uh, wind turbine can do. Um, and that because they're able to make them at that scale, the cost is extremely is extremely reduced, meaning they become more profitable. Um, also, it, it it apparently is better for birds because the blades move uh, slower or something like that. But but anyways, point being, um, you know the renewable stuff and batteries and everything are are on the rise dramatically, and Tesla solar business is in limbo and in question. So I think that you know when they get back to it, when they get back to the point where they can actually start focusing on this, which I assume would be after they, you know, Model 3 is kind of ramped up and like, you know, business as usual can return or the next big thing they can focus on. Um, I think that we'll, they'll be at a place to really uh, accelerate and that it will become a significant part of their business. But right now, it definitely seems to be like it's it's a bit depressed. So I'm curious what you guys think about that. Um, this Tesla Solar, if you have Tesla Solar, let me know how it's going. I ended up going with someone else. Um, and so, if, and in fact, if you're interested, I, I use a website called Energy Sage, um, and you can learn more about them at teslanomics.co slash energy sage. Basically, you submit your, your, you know, your, your, your energy bill, uh, you do, you pick your roof line out, you do all these things. Um, and then it, and then it, you know, lets people bid on it and it kind of breaks it down. It's, it's an amazing, amazing product. So I, I highly recommend it. Um, so I would go check that out. If, if you are interested in getting solar, um, and Tesla, you know, it, it isn't necessarily like your first choice. So let me know what you guys think about that down um, in the comments. Next, I have, um, uh, this is a fun story. And this one, <laughs> it, it really plays to the American kind of heartstrings here. Uh, and it's about a Cars.com article that recently came out stating 
what is the most American car? This is a study that they've uh, published before. And in this study, they basically look at um, all the cars made or the top 100 or something like that. And then they try to rank them by which one is the most American made. Um, and with our current political environment in the United States and, it, you know, tariffs galore, trade war happening, all these kind of crazy things bubbling up, who knows? I can't even keep up with what is happening or what, what will be happening. It's insane. Um, this was, I thought, a very interesting thing. And I was really bummed on it because Tesla is not even listed. In fact, if you want to look, hey, let's look up Tesla and see how well they did. They're not in the top 10 at all. Um, and let's see, okay, well, let's go look and research them. Uh, okay, Smart, Subaru, Toyota, um, where are they? So cars.com, I don't know if intentionally uh, or uh, unintentionally, didn't even consider Tesla in this study, it appears. Because when you look, I mean, and they have all these kind of other ones like Acura, obviously a, a Japanese brand, Alfa Romero, Aston Martin, Audi, Bentley. I mean, l l l all of these here, the exception of Buick and, the, and on the list are not even American brands. And here you have Tesla, the only car manufacturer in, in California. Um, and, you know, as we'll see, so, you know, the most American car manufacturer there is not even considered. So, I don't know what's going on. I reached out to them. I tried to figure out, show me the data. I would love to see a full breakdown, how you calculated it, how you figured this out. Why wasn't Tesla included? You know, this got me going. Anyways, this was kind of my fun weekend read and, and, and what I like to do in my free time. And so with that, uh, it reminded me of an article in Time that I covered last year. This was uh, March of 2017, um, where they, they actually ranked automakers, not individual autos. Um, and you can see here, uh, surprise, surprise, uh, the most American uh, car manufacturer, not make, not individual car, but car manufacturer uh, was Tesla. Um, and the reason, now these guys, the way they did it is they look at general assembly. Now that doesn't speak for everything, but Tesla, 100% of their cars are assembled in, um, in Fremont, California currently. Obviously it's gonna change over time, but here you go. So there you go. You know, and, and they beat out Jeep by a large percentage. I mean, look, you go 100% to 89, right? A full 11% difference. Then, you know, three, 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 you know, then it's kind of very tight. So they, they this was 20, uh, sorry, this data was from 2016. This was published in March of 2017. And so the where, where this data comes from, uh, first is from the AALA, which is the American Automobile Labeling Act. And this is the one where what they do is they have the actual uh, labeling act is about the um, the parts and where they where they come from. So you can kind of figure out, you know, the parts in a vehicle, how many of them are American made. And that's one way of looking at this. Then um, the Kogod School of Business, uh, I think I'm saying that right, um, I'm, I don't know. They have this Made in America Auto Index um, and they actually take uh, the AALA rating. You can see that here, or I'll try to bring that up a little bit better. Um, and they have a factor of whether or not you have a US headquarters. Um, and then that gives them kind of this rating here, this TDC, their own rating that they use. And they do it by make um, of every single car. Uh, not every single car in the world, obviously. I believe it's the top 100 or something that are sold in the United States. So uh, me, being me, um, doing what I do, uh, I pulled this data together uh, and I figured let's let's go through it. So previously we were looking at 2016 data. Now we're looking at 2017 data. Um, and you can see that the most American company, uh, most American car company um, overall is still Tesla. Now, what I've done here is I look at the actual uh, average because if you did a sum, some of these manufacturers uh, like like Cadillac here have you know ten vehicles, GMC has four, Lincoln has five, you know. So if you did a sum on this, it wouldn't be make sense. You have to do an average, and I'm using the TDC method, that TDC calculation you just saw there. And so you can see here that Tesla is at 75, um, whereas the next one is at 70 and then 68.32, 64, so it kind of just goes down from there. The least, uh, in fact, I think all these guys are on the bottom are tied here. You know, Aston Martin, Ferrari, Lamborghini, yeah, these are just like completely zero, like nothing made um, <laughs> in America at all. Uh, and then you can kind of go up from there. So by automaker, not by individual car, 
Tesla still leading the pack. This will change as they get the new Shanghai factory. Um, Elon also alluded to uh, a European gigafactory, um, which would be in Germany, I believe, is where he was stating. Um, although, you know, things like that may, may change in that the Tesla European headquarters would still remain um, in the Netherlands. Um, but there you go, you know, so this is kind of by automaker. Now, if you do it by the AALA, which is just solely on where are the parts from, not anything about where is it assembled or any of those things, but where do they get the parts from? Tesla falls pretty far down to number nine, and it's because the batteries and things come from other countries. Now, Tesla has stated they want to get all of this from North America. However, it's it's unlikely or, or it's still kind of questionable whether or not they'll be able to do that. So um, there you have it. So the AALA method ranks Chrysler uh, as, as the, the highest overall, Tesla at number nine, but when you take into account things like where the stuff is assembled and the U.S. headquarters, yes or no, uh, you know, you you get uh, Tesla coming out on top, which I think is the right way to look at things. So then, um, you know, I kind of wanted to go deeper and I looked at, let's compare this pattern here. And you can see kind of as this TDC rank goes up, so does the ALA number. Um, and you can kind of just see this pattern of every vehicle here. So I'm going to publish this data. It's already on the website, but um, I'll put a link to it in the description. You can kind of see every individual vehicle. Um, and then the last thing uh, I wanted to look at here was the individual car. So the make and model, which one is the most American? And using the um, the TDC method, uh, you're looking at the Buick Enclave, the Chevrolet Traverse, et cetera, et cetera. Tesla's actually not super high on this list. Um, they're down at ranked at 40th, um, or they're tied for 40th with a bunch of other folks because uh, of, of their parts coming from other parts of the world. So uh, long story short, um, if anyone gives you crap about, you know, not buying American or anything, you can rest assured that Tesla undoubtedly is the most American car maker. Um, other ones, of course, maybe employ more, employ more people and all these other things. So there's lots of different ways you can kind of slice that. But just percentage wise, using some really, you know, solid logic from uh, this Co-God School of Business, it, it, it's pretty undeniable. So there's the data for you. Um, there's the the story that 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 I you know saw that it was trying to tell me. I'm curious what you guys think about that. Leave me um, a comment down below. Alrighty, now it's time to get on to some Q and A. So if you are on Crowdcast, make sure to go vote for the questions that you're interested in um, or ask one if you haven't already. There's probably a, a ton queued up. Um, if you're on Patreon, um, thank you guys in advance for submitting your questions. I'm just going to refresh the page here, make sure it's formatted right, and then we'll switch over to Q&A. And if you want to join this, again, go to teslanomics.co slash join. You'll be invited um, every Monday. Um, also, if you want to make sure you get your question answered, then you can do it on Patreon um, by going to teslanomics.co slash Patreon. Um, anyone that supports us with it, $1 or more can get their questions answered guaranteed. All right. So first question, let me just make sure that's coming through comes from Mel Bernstein. Uh, Mel, uh, I'm sorry, Burst, Burstein. Ew, I think I've been saying your name wrong for so long now. Apologies. Um, Mel asks, um, we have read that the Fremont factory is full to the max. So where did they get the space for the tent? Well, I think when they say that it's full to the max, what they're saying is the actual interior space of it, which I think is 5 million square feet. Um, and so yeah, that's what they're talking about. There's still room out back, you know, there's still loading facilities and, and big parking spaces or big parking lot areas. Um, if you've ever been there, there is like a dirt, an adjacent dirt lot where it, when they have events there, you know, we park and that thing is probably, you know, several hundred acres big or maybe not that big, I don't know, maybe a hundred acres. So it's a pretty big space. Um, this one to me, I believe was just done in the parking lot out, out, out behind the factory, which they, there is room for it. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, that, that's, I think where they did it. Uh, I know that they've also been looking to expand the factory and, and leasing and, and other land nearby and all those things. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, potentially other space as well down, down the, down the road. Uh, next question from Mel again, tell us about your new studio in downtown San Diego. Uh, why did you stop using the one at your home? So I hope you guys like it. Um, this is where I'm recording out of now. Um, 
Mostly I did it because the internet at my house wasn't the best. Uh, and also my wife uh, is now uh, needs a, needed a photography studio. Um, by the way, if you're interested in her work, because she's an amazing photographer, she's selling prints on Society6. Go look up Jennifer J. Sullins um, and you'll find her work there. It's, it's amazing and um, obviously biased, but it really is. Uh, so, you know, she needed the photography studio. The space at home was perfect for that. Um, so now she has that and now I'm here. The internet's better. There's free coffee and free beer. Tons of great places to eat nearby. I have lots of colleagues. I'm such a social person. Being kind of locked in at home was... Um, kind of got, got to me after a while. So, so lots of reasons. And also I think we work is, is a really cool, really cool place. Um, you know, down the road, I can potentially host events here and things like that. So all kinds of reasons. Um, and, and, and I'm, you know, really enjoying, um, my time. So that's kind of the thinking behind it. Uh, William Gregory asks with a week left, do you think Tesla will hit their 5,000 a week goal? That's a big question. Uh, it, it really is. Um, I, I'm not quite sure. Uh, even if they get close to it, I'm going to call it a win. I think it's one of those things where it's going to be a uh, um, uh, it maybe a race to the finish, but you need to do something that's more sustainable, right? It's almost like you don't want to do the crash diet, right? You want to have a sustainable way of eating. Um, so I hope that they can get there in a sustainable way. Um, and if they do, wow, I mean, look out. That is just going to be a tremendous, uh, I mean, it's going to be hard. You're, you're literally be making minimum a quarter billion dollars, $250 million dollars. Um, per week. So, so very, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on with that. So, um, all right, now let's go over to, uh, the questions on uh, crowdcast and let me make sure that's coming up. So thanks again for the questions guys on uh, Patreon and thanks for the support. Let's go over to the Q and a here. There it is. Alrighty. So Tesla Ken asks, when will the Model 3 uh, update providing um, summit, summon Wi-Fi and cabin overheat protection start rolling out to our Model 3s? Have you received that update yet? And if so, can you describe how well the new features work? Uh, I've not received it. Um, I don't know when it will be rolling out. Um, I hope soon. Uh, it's something that um, I feel like part of this was already rolled out, so I'm a little confused um, as to what's going on. And also the version number is, is dramatically ahead of mine. So I'm curious. Yeah, I don't know. And I haven't got an update for quite a while. It used to be like every other day I was getting an update. I haven't got one in, 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 a, in a couple of weeks. So hopefully, hopefully you get it soon. And, and I hope you do as well, Ken. Thanks for the question. Leo asks, uh, for the new Model 3 Tesla owners, they lost unlimited charging and now will have to pay for the premium internet connection. Do you foresee anything else that Tesla will nickel and dime? Also, do you think it's worth the premium connectivity? Okay, well, yeah, let's talk about this for a second. So um, the internet service that is included with the Model S and X, it was never really clear as to what was going on with that. Uh, I know when I got mine in 2016, um, they said, yeah, it's good for four years, and then it may just be good forever. So it wasn't really even clear back then um, what was going on. And I think even the people that did have it for four years, because remember, we only really started to get these cars around 2012, 2013. So, you know, it was the four year mark only just started happening last year, really. So when, you know, that came up, people, they just were given free access kind of continuing. So it didn't really, you know, it wasn't really clear at all, but at some point, it, it was kind of in the back of most of our minds, like, yeah, we'll have to pay for this someday. And who knows what or when or, or any of that. Um, I definitely think it is worth it. Uh, and that's why yeah, I did that whole segment on, you know, buying your Tesla before then, because I think it's important. Um, for Model 3 owners, you never had any free supercharging. Um, and you never, you know, that was never gotten nothing free ever for that. So that's not something new at all. Um, I do think that the unlimited charging uh, may end this July 15th because of the folks that I normally ask, you know, I try to try to prod like, hey, is this really going to end or is it just kind of, you know, you guys are just refreshing it, giving yourself the opportunity to change the program. I haven't, got, I haven't got any answer. Normally I get answers. I didn't get any answer. So I'm a little bit more concerned about it this time. And that's why I felt it was appropriate to do that earlier. So, um, yeah, I think it's worth it. Um, I think, yeah, if you guys are on the fence about it, now is the time to buy, man. It really is. Um, but it always has been, you know, it's one of those things. And so I think the further on down the road we get, the more, yeah, kind of more nickel and diming things you'll see. Um, but right now I, I can't really, I, I don't know what else there would be. So thanks for the question, Leo. 
Phil asks, um, hello, Ben. Firstly, can you confirm that uh, TAC, Traffic Aware Cruise Control, is only available on Enhanced Autopilot? Secondly, there have been a number of positive reports last week from owners about their Teslas seem to actively intervene to prevent them being involved in accidents. How much do you think this is down to them having engaged autopilot? Lastly, do you think the Mad Max mode will be a real thing? Uh, I don't put the Mad Mad Max mode beyond them. Um, I, I, I totally could see that being a thing. Uh, then also, um, the traffic aware cruise control is uh, a part of enhanced autopilot. It is not a part of the standard features. Uh, Elon confirmed that. I think he was replying to Ryan McCaffrey on Twitter just a couple days ago. So yep, that, that, is, that is the case, uh, which I think is ridiculous, personally. I, I think it should just be included. Um, and then I don't know about the uh, positive reports about um, uh, uh, Tesla uh, intervening to prevent an accident. I, I really can't say. And, and honestly, just from my personal perspective, I don't really use um, autopilot hardly at all. So, so there's that. Um, thanks for the question, Phil. Vic asks, do you have any production numbers on the new P3D line, the new performance model three dual motor line? No, no, not really. I mean, we've got one, right? Elon posted a, a, a photo of that. So one, I don't know. Um, you know, if anything, they'll probably be producing a couple hundred um, a week to start. And then maybe, you know, that'll go up to a thousand a week. Yeah, who knows? It'll be a while, I think, before we know anything about that. Thanks for the question, Vic. Tom asks, if you don't get the premium internet connectivity from Tesla, will you still get the OTA updates? Oh, actually, I didn't mention that. I think in the electric article, they state that you will not. You'll only get updates when you're connected to Wi-Fi, um, unless it's an important safety update, I believe is what I read. Uh, so go check out that electric article and, 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 uh, and figure that out. Thanks for the question, Tom. Uh, Jeffrey Tripp um, asks, uh, so why did you get a new office? Yeah, I just answered that question. Um, hopefully that, that makes sense. Danny asks, um, any idea when the Model 3, uh, all-wheel drive Model 3 non-performance will be available? Uh, I believe Elon said second half of this year. Um, but then, you know, it's not clear whether or not you'll still have to get long range or premium material and those things or not. So, yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully, hopefully soon. Thanks for the question, Danny. Byron asks, um, with the changes in the Home Depot deal and the closing of some of the own, uh, their own sales centers, do you get a sense that the energy side of the business is shifting the focus to the industrial scale projects and away from residential? I feel that they are pushing the headlines to the grand scale projects to generate bigger revenues from fewer customers. Well, I mean, I think you kind of answered it there. It makes sense from a business standpoint. This is why, uh, like when you think about a tech business or anything else, ones I'm most familiar with, you know, B to B, like enterprise software is a much more lucrative market, but harder to get into. Um, whereas B to C, you just have tons of more customers, lower profit margin, all those kind of things. So yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised, but it, I think this is just them, you know, kind of still cleaning house and trimming the fat from the Solar City deal. I think that maybe next year we'll start to see uh, it ramp up again. But but at this time, yeah, it definitely seems like the uh, the not energy side, but the um, but the uh, uh, the solar side specifically is is uh, is a bit depressed. Thanks for the question, Byron. Uh, Pierre and Matt asks, uh, do you feel the enhanced supercharging stations, higher charging rates, solar powered, and non Model Three charging? Uh, will be a separate profit center that they someday may exceed Model 3 revenue. I don't know what you're talking about, enhanced supercharging station. If you're talking about Supercharger V3, um, I don't know. I, I, are they going to charge for that? Uh, that'd be a, that'd be a surprise to me. Uh, I'm not really sure. Could be. Walt asks, um, hello from the top of Halakala Crater. Halakala Crater. Apologies. Uh, I'm wondering about um, being able to download updates on Wi-Fi since I have no cell reception. I would have to drive 30 miles or so to get good self-service. Yeah, so this will definitely be a thing that happens um, very soon uh, with uh, with the updates to the Model 3 and the Model S um, and, and X already do this. So yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the question, Walt. Uh, Chamburn asks, uh, love your show. I am from uh, Mauritius, which is a small island on the east coast of Africa. Well, thanks for watching. Um, being so far away to buy a Tesla uh, stocks online or any other way, being so far away, is there uh, being so far away? Is there a way to buy Tesla stocks? I don't think so. Um, I think you need to be in the U.S. because I believe they're only listed on the U.S. markets. Um, with Starlink operational, do you think that they might build a receiving station on the ground and then from there their own towers to make their own cell network from which the Tesla vehicles can connect to the network and people can have the internet and cell network? I think that's a a, a good bet. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. 
people the thing people don't understand about Starlink is that it's not like worldwide Wi-Fi. You just pop open your phone. You still have to have this uh, pizza uh, size, pizza box size uh, uh, receiver here on the ground in order to get it. So it's not something that um, that you know you can just have built into the cars. It doesn't mean that they couldn't um, do something else. Uh, and, and build that into the new vehicles or offer something for a home appliance or something like that. But right now, yeah, I think what you're talking about makes a lot of sense. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I would say totally a possibility. Thanks for the question and thank you for watching. So cool. Uh, Neil Farm D uh, asks, since fellow non-owning uh, Canadians were given the priority to order Model 3 over non-owning U.S. customers, but may have decided to hold off for all-wheel drive, um, who then gets priority for uh, to order them when available? Uh, you mean like once the all-wheel drive? So here's my guess: um, is that they they put off, you know, they're 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 holding off to Q3 to get the maximum tax credit. So my guess would be as soon, like literally July 1st, which they're already doing some changes on that date. My guess is that July 1st, it's just gonna be an absolute torrent of, of Model 3 deliveries and invites and everything. So my guess would be at that moment, it'll be 100% US focused. Thanks for the question. Um, Danny S, can you use XM radio through your phone on Model 3 or with paid Tesla internet? I don't think you can do it right now, but I do believe you can in the future. Um, I'm not 100%, but I believe it's listed in the owner's manual. So you can go check that out online, but I believe it will have satellite um, radio in the future. Thanks, Danny. Hector asks, will Tesla ever use the, the 44160 in the Model X or S? Uh, that, so if you guys know what he's talking about, um, I received a report a while ago that they were gonna have this new battery cell. I think I got it wrong and I think the report was wrong. So, uh, I, I think it's a different thing. Maybe what you're think, referring to is this 2170, which is what they're using in the model three. I don't know if they'll use in the model S or X. It's interesting to, to see if they will, um, because potentially you could get a much higher, uh, capacity in there, which would be fantastic. Um, potentially getting the car over 400 miles of range. So yeah, yeah, maybe. I hope so. Um, will you do a video on how you deal with the crack in your glass? Um, I did, uh, actually. Go check it out. It also was an interview paired with the interview with my friend, um, Joe Scott. All right. Uh, last question. Have you heard anything on how much Elon enjoys his new couch? Uh, I have not, um, but I have talked to folks, other folks there that have enjoyed it. Um, so, yeah, they definitely um, are, are, are having having a bit of fun with it. Okay, everyone, well, I appreciate you all joining me here. Um, don't forget we have that giveaway where you can uh, get an overnight test drive with the S or X, um, which only ends, it ends on Wednesday, so in two more days. Um, and so you need to go enter to win. It's free and you can get multiple entries by referring other people at teslanomics.co slash drive Tesla. I wanna just reemphasize that because of the July 1st deadline that is coming up. Um, thanks to Brilliant for supporting this show and thanks to all of you for joining me week in and week out. I really true, uh, I, I truly do appreciate it. Um, it really means the world to me and it makes Mondays for me so 